I'll do. I'll do. Are you not saying I'll do? I'll do. Right, geezers, uh, <laughs> something a bit different today. Um, if I'm in the same clothes, it's because I've done this interview straight after me other one. Stop worrying. I'm just stop, saying. Tony, stop worrying, mate. So, we've got <laughs> Keith, whose life story I'm going to do. Tony, whose life story I'm doing. Um, both IPP prisoners. Both done a lot of jail. Um, both heroin addicts. Ex heroin addicts. Ex heroin addicts, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm sure you know where I'm coming from. Um, so, like these two hooked up when uh, Keith was 15. Uh, Tony has no idea what happened to Keith then. It's the. Well, we're going to do Keith's story and we will include this. I have asked him whether he mind talking about this now to get Tony's. It's not for. You know, it was a bad time. Um, their friendship started around this time, on and off in between prison. Did you ever meet each other in prison? No, no, no. never. No. no, that's mad. That if we yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, Tony. What I'm going to drop on you now is it's terrible. We know, you know, uh, your violent upbringing and that children being a product. So I'm going to let Keith start. Uh, because you've known each other all this time and you know you've never sort of discussed this. Mm -hmm. Are you all right with that? Yeah, 20, 20 years, 21 years before I told anybody properly. So we're going to start, Keith, and we're going to see what you think, mate. Like I say, it's not you know for shock or views, it's just again, you know, product's childhood. All right, Keith, mm -hmm. I'm just going to sit back and listen, mate. Yeah, um. So I'd gone to school with a lad who'd, who'd become my best mate um, and he'd end up being fostered out um, somewhere in Manchester, I'm not going to name where, um, but it was a pub and he was going to stay there at weekends with him um, and I'd been going there for, I'd, I'd say a couple of months, something like that, each weekend and got to know um, his foster parents really well. Um, thought they were sound. Um, foster dad used to tell us stories of his background, which I thought I respected. I didn't. I think I feared it. Um, and he used to have uh, a punch bag in the cellar of the pub. We used to go down there, um, and I'd show him my kicks because I used to tie boxing, and he'd be doing the boxing. We'd hold the pad for each other, and um, <clears throat> one night... Um, and how old were you, this? I was about 15 then, oh, 14, okay. 15, and, and one <laughs> night then uh, I had to make my own way to the pub because I missed the last bus. Um, and I got there and it was it was early hours in the morning and, and there was only the foster dad up and uh, my mate had gone to bed. There was other foster kids there, they were in bed as well. Um, and foster dad said, stay up, have a drink. Because he used to let us stay up, have a drink when the pub was shut and, and he'd open the pool table up and let us play pool. So I was having a drink with him and then about 20 minutes later some guy come walking out the toilets, um, which, which shocked me because I didn't know anybody else was in the pub. And he said, no, no, it's my friend, it's all right. We sat down and we're having a drink. And um, he knew how to get me attention, you know. I love martial arts, always have done. Um, and he said, oh, he said, my mate does, um, my dead mate does Thai boxing. And I said, oh, do you? And he said, yeah. I said, who did you do it with? And he said, Master Todder. I went, no. I said, oh, I didn't with Master Skin. But straight away, you know, that was a connection. Uh, something we could we could relate to each other. Um, and the foster dad said, why don't you show me your kicks on the bag? And I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've gone down. Um, and I remember a, a barrel being in front of the bag and I've gone to move the barrel out of the way to get to the bag. But as I was doing it, I got a crack to the face. I thought one of them had gone to it in the bag and missed it by accident and caught me, um, but they hadn't. Um, I was, I was assaulted pretty bad by not not the foster dad, but the other guy. Um, and uh, when I come round, I was, I was being raped. Fucking I was being, hell, I was being raped by um, by the foster dad, um, and then I had to do something to the other bloke. 
Um, and when they finished, they just threw a 50 pound note at my feet um, each and told me if I told anybody, they'd shoot me dad. And because of this foster guy's background and what he told me and who he was connected with, I believed that. However, I still wanted to tell my dad because I wanted my dad to go and deal with it. And I ran and walked, ran and walked, ran and walked from Moss Side to Walkden. I had 50 pound notes in my hand. That's how, that's how my head was up my ass. Um, I could have got a taxi. But the closer I got to home, I started to doubt things. I started to feel dirty and ashamed and like, you know, did I ask for that? And is it my fault? And did would my dad believe me? Because, you know, let's have it right. You know, I'd, I'd told a lot of lies as a child, me. So I'd, I didn't think my dad would believe me. By the time I'd got home, um, I couldn't tell him, cut a long story short. I couldn't tell him and, and I didn't. I didn't tell anybody for a long time, over 20 years. But at that time, um, I'd, I ran away from home. Um, and a lad who we knew said, I know where there's somewhere you can stay. Um, and it was yours. Fucking and hell. you put me up. You put me up for um, a couple of weeks. Um, and I, I ended up using well, for the first me. time. Um, no, 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 it, no, 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 I, I asked him no, no, Tony. no, no, Just no, listen, no, listen, it was actually, no, no, mate, you know the other guy, you know the other guy, you know the other guy, and he used him for a long, long time, long time, we were like, we were thick as thieves, we were like brothers, we, we just, you know, we were everywhere he went, I went, everywhere I went, he went, um, and I used for a, a long time, but what I've, what I realised very, very quick, Tony, was that heroin, it did stop me thinking about it. Um, but it took the emotion away from the memory. I didn't know that at the time when I was using, I just knew it made me feel good and it made me feel something that I wanted to feel and I got addicted to that feeling. Um, later on, through therapy and counselling and through Survivors Manchester, I now know exactly what it was. It was the heroin took the emotion away from the memory. So when people say, um, drugs don't have a purpose. I believe at that, at that time they had a purpose because I don't think, I, I think without that, I think I'd have committed suicide because the flat, I still get flashbacks now. I still get flashbacks. I never knew fuck all of No, me. nobody did. Nobody did, Tony. Nobody did. You know? Sure. I'll, I'll, well, you. I'm just glad it weren't me who got your an heroin because that was my first thoughts. Well, fucking hell, a 15 year old lad, I'm not selling drugs to 15 year olds. You know what? We wouldn't have done that. So only that. It would need must, wouldn't it? All yeah. I did was sell people who, who I knew. Yeah. Um, so obviously, if you've got. I came with the other fella who you knew. Right. Like, <coughs> um, you wouldn't have known how old I was anyway. No, do you, I know, wouldn't, do no. you know what I mean? No. Um, but yeah, I had to go into therapy. I, go, I went to Grendon. But the first time I went to Grendon, so they put me in a, a group with, with two with two sex offenders. No, I couldn't have handled Grendon. I put me, that's well, what this I is just what I did. So I put my guard up, and what I did for three years while I was there, I spoke about what I needed, to, uh, what I wanted to speak about, and not what I needed to. By the time I got out, I was only out seven months. Convicted for armed robbery again, and got like and, and got IPP. And I thought, you know what? This time I'm going to Grendon. And I'm going to do it. And as soon as I landed on the induction wing, I said to uh, Richie Shuko, the head therapist, I said, listen. I've been abused as a kid and I need to talk about it. Now you know I can't hide it. And and I did, I smashed it They through. wanted me to go there, but I was reluctant because I knew that you you, you, you did courses with sex offenders. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't angle that. Yeah, they said, I, I couldn't angle being on the same wing as a sex offender. I just it couldn't hard. angle it. It would hard. Uh, so I said no. So in the end, they sent me to Channing's Ward, yeah. where, what did the Cognitive Self Change Programme. Yeah. Which, yeah, I did four years in Strange Rays waiting to go there. But I couldn't angle being around sex offenders. Yeah. I just couldn't angle. In the 80s, I did attack a few sex offenders, yeah. but, um, which I never talked about on my life story, I suppose. I forgot about that until it's mentioned, but yeah. Listen, guys, we're going to leave that down. That's really upset me, that, because I had no idea. That is not that the is intention. Just, on, you know, he, he, he talked about you, you fondly. Yeah, yeah. come on, mate. Oh. I, I told you, Tony, you thought you were dead. Yeah, I did. I got told Maybe in jail. I should have been. No. After no, a story like that. No, 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 no. What, no, what no, part no, in that no. did you play? You well, play. I didn't play. Well, I kept feeding your rabbit probably after that for I don't know long. If I hadn't gone to you, I'd have gone somewhere else. Mm. You know the score. I do. You know the I score. Do. But fucking hell, you just think you've had it bad. I think I've had it bad. Well, listen, do you know what? I'll tell you what, guys. I look at my own childhood and that, and. Each is their own, though. You know, you know I've, I've I had a privilege. No, no. 
No, he's, he's dead. Go on. Listen. Go on. Shall we go and get a coffee, guys? Let's get a coffee. So Can you do that? Plan. Yeah. Come on, he's Tony, sorry. Keith, we're going to do Keith's life story. We're going to continue That's Tony's terrible, life story. Man. I thought my story were bad. All I did was go hungry. Well, do you know what? You found each other again now, so you can <laughs> chat and that, can't you? Well, there's one thing I will say. Is it turned off now? No. The one thing I will say is um, Keith's had a few recalls, but don't let that dishearten you. Because you can still go for your license to be squashed from the first time you got released. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's a fact. And you you make sure that ten years from when you were first got released, my I, I'm nine years on license now, so next year I, my my case will automatically go in front of the pro board, and my offender manager's um, going to say that you know this license should be squashed so 10 years does it automatically go in it front automatically of you don't have to apply to, for it no you don't have to apply for it but you tell your your supervising officer yeah, yeah. that you do know that and yeah. make them aware of it because when's your 10 license when 10 years up i've only been well when did i first get out 214 three years 214 Two years away. No, when did you first get out? Two fourteen. Yeah. So yeah. So from yeah. So two years. Twenty twenty-four. Two yeah, years. You can go up for your license to be squashed. You can also have your supervision squashed after so many years. Yeah, five, I think it is. But I'm still on supervision. But I don't mind supervision as long as when I go up for parole, they don't turn around and say, "Oh, well, we need a bit of time while he's unsupervised." I want that supervision. I I still feel I need that supervision. Yeah, I like at the supervision because it, you know it's it gives you something to do and it's a it's a goal. Yeah. Is it a reminder of where you're at to keep you on track? Yeah, probation. Yeah. Well, I believe that I've kept myself on track. But yeah, it, 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 but I think after 20 years. They've had enough. They've had, I'm 18 years it'll be next year. I think I've earned my chance to prove myself. Are you going on a march? I don't know because I've got lung disease, so I find it hard to walk. Yeah, uh, yeah I've, 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 I've got a very myself. serious office. We're, we're looking. Yeah, IPP have, prisoners, there's a march in London uh, where they're going now. spirit will be there. Did you read about the Virgin train? Manchester, two yeah, hours. We'll, we'll have a look at it, mate, and we'll get it sorted. All right, mate. Uh, Tony no, I'm going to get off. I'll let you two have a brew because you've already bought Are you me. sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get off. Listen, we didn't drop that on you. He, no, it caught me off guard, I know, I know. Shit, man, that's like... <sighs> mates, pales in, mates, my past pale into insignificant. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. This is oh, this, no, 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 it doesn't. This is the whole thing, mate, you know. Because For if me, I'd had two guys that raped me, I would have murdered them by now. Well... I'm not saying you're not... You, 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 this is a... See, I've not lived. When I think... I think I've had it bad. No, no, no. That's it's nothing. not. Do you know for me what it's about? It's about people being judgmental. Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know Tepping, what the worst thing, a step the, way they, the way they give you money like that, that made up for it. Oh, here's some money, yeah. That probably but, made it worse. Come on. Shit. Bro. Cheers, guys. Um,